Arista EDU100 is popular because it's cheap, but is it any good? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. As before, we have Tri-X in blue and here Arista 100 in red. Now, what's interesting in this curve is that we are seeing quite a an arch in how these values separate. So we've got the toe and the toe is a little bit steeper than Tri-X. So that means we should have a little bit better shadow separation. And then we've got our mid-tones that have a fairly good straight line. And then we go up into this slow kind of flattening of a shoulder at the top, which is a little weird. We've not really seen that. We kind of had something like that with uh, the Kodak 5022 double X movie film, but here we're kind of seeing it as a much slower arch, but we are definitely getting a flattening shoulder at the top. That means we're going to have a uh, mediocre, I think, highlight separation. So let's, let's look at the prints and see if that bears out. Uh, otherwise, 
I don't know. This is, is this is a weird a weird slope. So let's see the prints. Here we have Tri-X. Here we have Arista 100. Good news, this is shot at 100. So we are getting full film speed in stock D76. Uh, but the development time is a bit on the hot side. So we can see our highlights are a little too bright. That is just um, adjusting our development time uh, to a little bit shorter, more reasonable. Now, immediately we can see that our spectrum response here is just about exactly the same as it is over here with Tri-X. We have even tones down the right column and the left column. So that's great. We're going to get a nice, good tonal response that we would expect from a panchromatic black and white film. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in because there's not a whole lot to say here other than that. Since we're getting about the same color response, we're getting pretty much the same tonality uh, on the larger scale. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the fine details and the grain structure. Now that we're up close, we can see the grain structure side by side. The Arista 100 is finer grain. The uh, tonality seems pretty on par. Uh, but what I am noticing, if I look at the highlights right under my eye uh, in the shadow, it does not seem quite as crisp. Now, I've gone through the whole print and looked to see if we miss focused on the eye. We're going to get into the collar here in a moment to see if we're focused on the same point. But on this first section, it looks like while we're finer grain, we're a bit softer grain. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the, the shoulder, the first shoulder, and uh, see what it relates to there. Here in this section, we can see uh, the grain structure against the dark part of my shoulder here compared, and it is finer grain. We can see some of the collar. It seems to pick up the detail pretty good, but again, it just doesn't seem as sharp in some regard. Let's go to the other shoulder. Okay, so now we're looking at the fuzzy edge of the other shoulder against the background. The stitching is a little blown out, so it's hard to see the detail in the stitching there. But if we look at the ribbed collar of the shirt, it's just not as sharp. It seems to be in focus, so I don't believe it's a matter of camera misfocusing because it seems to be sharpest on the collar uh, since we do have shallowed up the field, but it's fairly uh, fairly clear that the front of the shirt, uh, about right in the center of the picture or, or the frame here, is at the sharpest point of the autofocus. But for some reason, it just does not seem as sharp. All right, here we are looking at the face. Again, detail is there. We can see the pores in my skin, kind of in the mid-tones of the forehead. We can see the hairs on my temple and so forth. It's just not as sharp as it should be. So somewhere in there should be sharp. I've got my ear in the on the left side, my eye in the middle, my nose on the right. Somewhere that depth of field should have hit it sharp. And I'm just not getting that. It looks like I'm getting as sharp or as in focus as the other film. It's just not a sharp film compared to Tri-X. It's still a good film. It's still pretty fine grain. Um, and looking at the print from a viewing distance is perfectly acceptable. But once we zoom in and look at it very critically, it's just not quite as sharp as some of the other films we've looked at. So that's something to take into account. If you're shooting 35 millimeter and you're enlarging large, that might become a problem. If you're shooting large format, even if you're making a 16 by 20 print, you'll probably never even know 
So this is not a deal breaker by any means. It's just something to be aware of when you're making a buying decision as to what film you want to use. Overall though, it's a really great performance. Tonality is good. Spectral response is good. Uh, detail is there. Grain is fine. Just not quite as sharp as Tri-X. Now there are other developers that might increase the acuteness or sharpness of the edge of the grain uh, more than the stock D76. You'd have to test those on your own. So there are options, or you can just leave it as it is. It's a look, and it's its own look. All right, that's all we're going to look at this week. So thanks again for watching. We will see you next time.